just I, I want you guys to take it because we we use uh, AI for literally everything, and it is very common for us to assess legal documentation contracts using AI so we can get a very thorough understanding of anything that we're engaging in. Like we use AI to, to read everything. We read it ourselves and make sure our understanding is crystal. But to just have AI do that work and not take into any considerations that it might be wrong is A, too much trust in the AI like right off the bat, but B, uh, the, the, that person is, is completely out to lunch on, on, on just how to use the tool because you can't put in one, uh, uh, inference or you can't prompt it once for one inference and think that's going to be the end. That's what should be submitted to, uh, your employer, your teacher, the judge. You can't just do what you can't just talk to it one time and think the answer is going to be perfect. It takes constant iterations, constant testing taking those inferences, putting it back into the machine to get something perfect. So AI is getting a bad name because people, human beings, are, are typically incompetent and lazy. The judge in the case said Abkhaz's intentions may have been sincere, but his conduct was, quote, highly reprehensible. The judge acknowledged AI's potential to improve access to justice, but emphasized that individuals are still responsible for the accuracy of their submissions. Abkhaz's legal saga spent six years, three continents, and even includes a plane currently seized at Sherbrooke Airport. The court upheld the original ruling and confirmed that aviation companies can reclaim the aircraft. But the moral of the story here is that while AI might be a useful tool, you might want to check your facts before hiring it as legal counsel.